Hello and welcome to this Glasgow City Council Technical Teachers 3D Rendering with Grain Combinations getting near the end of the series now. I just want to take a couple of seconds to have a look at that cylinder. I cut off a bit earlier in the last uh, video. It looks a little bit distorted in, on the camera view there, but you'll see a finished result at, uh, in, in a little while. So, let's look at this combination, this unusual shape which has got chamfers and radiuses and holes. So. I'm putting the end grain on as before. I'm going to admit to be a mistake here. The leading edge, the right hand corner, on the, I put a black line at the top there to suggest uh, a curve on the leading edge and I didn't follow it up. You'll find I catch up the problem later on but at the moment those sharp corners, the last two I've just drawn, maybe a little bit uh, more thinking when I got to that stage and put a curve on there would have made a difference. However, as always, start off with the end grain, use the sharp tip of the pencil using a outlining grip using the side of the tip of the pencil to add the brown tone on the inside of the arc and again working your wrist inside makes life a little bit easier. I am missing the curves of these holes out uh, intentionally at the moment. I just want to concentrate on the bits we know. Uh, so the only real difference here is there's a there's a chamfer. Okay, so we haven't really covered a chamfer before. Uh, I, I, there should have been a curve on that leading edge and you'll see I'd make a wee a uh, mess of that and I will get back to tidying it up a little bit later on but you'll see evidence of the mistake. So in this case it's on the underside, the right hand side if you like, of that uh, grain on the top and uh, same again on the upper surface but there is a chamfer there and the only way of really showing that will be through a, a tonal change later on. Um, so we're going to have the right hand surface darkest then the end grain and the sloping part may be similar but there should be enough definition to, to see the difference there. So now working on the inside of that uh, line again, or the inside of the curve leading off the uh, end grain, putting the side uh, browns on using the side of the tip of the pencil and a little bit on that edge that wouldn't normally be seen where the, the, the grain's been cut off. So that's flying round with the brown. Let's turn the page and get on with uh, tidying up any little bits and pieces. But where, where the grain goes into a hole, I'm just going to estimate that, that we drop back towards the vanishing point. So in this case here, I'm going to take that line back in towards the left hand vanishing point. It's not a lot of else we'll see on that right hand one at the moment. But on this right hand one it would be darker on the upper edge. And on the lower one it will be darker on the upper edge. Now the, the, the curve I'm putting on there is a sort of version of the end grain but set back at the end of the hole. There's the bit that's cut back and it'll be towards the right of that coming back a bit. Um, Turn the page, there'd be something there with that dark line we just touched. There's a little bit of darkness there, but I'm just fading that off either side, going towards the left hand vanishing point. So using the side of the tip of the pencil, now these will get darker with tone and with different combinations of colours later on, but that's the starting point. I now know where things are going on this surface. So very quickly, let's run through the orange. Again, I'm warming everything up, just working on the top side of these lines. I'm getting a little bit lazy, a little bit speedy and probably that's where my mistake came in on that leading edge corner and uh, not turning the page here. You, working to the top of that line and the end grain still to be done plus the top. So you can see very much the same set of skills. What I'd like to do is uh, if I get a chance to make up the video, I've done the same thing as a digital render um, and you can see the same mechanical skills. What I might not do is put a, a voiceover on that but Suffice to say that everything we've done on the four or five videos so far is exactly the same on the digital version using the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil. The, the, the difference obviously is the cost. There's a lot of pros and cons either way, but again, we'll leave that for another video and I'll probably just stick some music in the back of that just so you can get an idea of the, the, the similarities and the differences, such as they are. Now, Inside that hole, there's going to be a little bit of an oranginess coming up towards one and down towards the other. Same on the hole on the other side. So we're just going to make sure the end grain is complete, turning the page. So that cylinder from the, brown, the down at the brown area there will gradually get lighter orange as it's heading up. But again, those lines heading towards the vanishing point. So inside the holes, head towards the vanishing point. So we do a whole session on cylinders, but basically you get an idea where the centre line is going, then the lines are going towards the same vanishing point. Uh, here we go. So we've made up most of the colour on that. I'm just going to fill in any little bits that have been left white. Uh, again, it's slightly off centre for the video on this. I had tried to pull everything over, but there we go. That's a little bit better. There we go. So touch the yellow on top now, just to flatten down the white. 
If you did want to highlight a gloss finish then leaving a little bit of white on is not too bad an idea. Trouble with white is it's difficult to put on white paper uh, is to put on, put on an extra layer of white. You can use gel pens, you can use Tipex, you can use good quality white pencils. To be honest, if you want to add white, start on a darker paper. And it will, ah, there we go. There's my just realised my mistake. That's the little curve I should have put on. You see the sharp corner and the curve. My mistake. To show as a radius, and there's, there's two hints of the radius there. One is the curve of inked in above, and two is drew where the pencil is now. Then the bottom corner there. There's a radius on that corner. So my mistake. Should have seen that earlier on. Um, one of the disadvantages of a manual drawing is there is no undo button. So I'd have to redraw this whole page. So I thought I'd leave my deliberate mistake on for you all to give me a hard time if we ever bump into each other. So just firming in a few of those darker bits just to reinforce the, the growth line again, the growth uh, grain line. Um, yeah, it's firming in quite a little bit. So it's going to be more on the, um, the use of grey that we can then highlight the different surfaces. As always, I must have spent some money. I'm using a new mask or it might be the same one turned over. Right hand surface, masking the leading edge. Now this leading edge would be curved. So what's going to happen here, if you just notice as I'm going along, just to get the flat tone on that whole surface, including the hole, is I'm just going to start pulling it slightly to the left. And gradually that will give me a little bit more of a change of tone at the corner, rather than a sudden change. I'll probably go over that again. I definitely have to go around to the back edge, use the mask again, drop that on and wiping from the vanishing point side of the tip of the pencil. You can see as if your practice has gone on in the mask just to make sure of using the pencil correctly. These pencils do need sharpened quite a lot. Um, blunt pencils are no use. And you'll see a lot of kids, maybe should have mentioned this right at the beginning, if your pencil's not sharp, it's not worth doing this. Um, and a lot of kids, when they add colour, they basically try and squeeze colour out like it was a toothpaste tube. They squeeze a pencil and hold it at the tip and try and squeeze the, the colour out. Using the side of the pencil here, as I'm doing on this curve, is essential. Even for short lengths like that, working towards the vanishing point. Now in this case, I'm going to try and get these curves going towards the left-hand vanishing point. It's a little bit too dark there, so I'm going to have to blend it out a little bit more. And there is a, there are rather two C-shaped inked lines on these holes. You probably noticed them earlier on. These are shadow lines between the areas that we can't see on the curve so it's roughly seven minutes past seven on one of them and about what would that be ten minutes past five on the other and um, and that just reinforces the fact there's a curve round there that we can't see so a little bit work on that pencil and those inside surfaces to give the idea of a dark hollow recess one thing that's standing out like a sore thumb for me at the moment is the back of that hole it's a stopped hole so the bottom of that stop toe is looking very, very bright indeed. So once I've done these lines towards the vanishing point, or these areas towards the vanishing point, I'm going to have to get a little bit uh, more grey in that corner. And I'm possibly using that pencil with a bit too firm a grip, but it's a narrow space and this, these pencils aren't working particularly well once I build up lots of colour. And that's that shadow effect going inside the hole. Because one hole we know is a stop toe, the one on the right hand side, we have no idea we can't see down far enough. And I'm just increasing the tone on the right hand side this now on the area that's already been done going over the mast area just so I get a, a clearer definition between the two because that slope will also have a very very slight tonal change it's got to be slightly darker than the top that's how we know it's got a chamfer on it and the area that still needs to be done is the end grain so just firming in a couple of these lines on the curves making the holes a little bit deeper zoomed out a little bit to see the overall effect and touching up round the edges of those bits those say uh, shadow lines just to really make them stand out a little bit more so we've got the the basics of uh, an object we can see a slight chamfer there the curve can be a bit a little bit misleading one thing we did right at the beginning is just to use a the straightforward pencil to give the outline a little bit more weight and that's the brown pencil the darker one of uh, used in this whole sequence it's the only one i've done this for it just adds a little bit more to the edge, a slight uh, radius to the final outside edge. There's a couple of sketches, photographs of the sketches. One without an outline, but the shadows have been added there to plant it on a surface. 
Uh, maybe just give this a firm outline. It's not everybody's cup of tea. It's old school, but giving something a black outline, maybe just a touch of the Sharpie, we can uh, give a little bit more definition to those objects. Hopefully you've enjoyed or learned something along the way. It's a chance to practice now. Again, it's what you feel you're confident doing in front of kids that you can then pass these skills on. By all means, pass this around each other. Change them, mute them, use them any way you want. It's been a pleasure working with you. Hopefully you enjoy some of these skills at some point in the future.